Hey guys, this is your host Rabbit, and welcome to another Conquest of Azeroth 1-30 class showcase, today featuring the long-awaited Chronomancer. The Chronomancer has the utility role, they use cloth armor and they have a vast array of buffs and debuffs, a very unique set of abilities, and use mana, order, and chaos. So we finally got it. They finally added the Chronomancer to the COA Alpha. As soon as this launched, me and four of my buddies from our guild Calculated all got together and we rushed to 30 as fast as we possibly could and we wound up securing the Realm First Level 30 Chronomancer. There wasn't an achievement that went with it because we're pretty sure one of the GMs accidentally stole it while they were doing some testing, but we we're very positive that we were the first group to get there, clocking in at about 55 minutes from 1 to 30. The Chronomancers have a really, really unique toolkit, way different than any other class I've ever seen, so really excited to show you all what that looks like. So hope you're ready for that. Everyone strap in and let's get this knocked out. Alright, so starting off at level 1, we get access to a couple abilities. The first of which being Wand of Time. You begin attacking an enemy target with your equipped wand. So just your basic wand shoot ability. We also get Sand Blast. Launches a blast of magical sand at an enemy target, dealing 12 to 15 arcane damage and regenerating 5% of your maximum mana. Casting this spell reduces the cast time of subsequent sand blasts by 20%, stacking up to 5 times. Casting this again at 5 stacks will consume the effect to reduce the cast time of your next unearth by 34%, stacking 3 times. Essentially the way this works is you spam sand blast and every time that you use it, it starts to cast a lot faster. All the way until you get to 5 stacks where it's just an instant cast. Once you do the instant cast, you get 1 stack of the buff that reduces the cast of Unearth by 34%, which stacks up to 3 times, so eventually you'll get a instant cast Unearth. Speaking of Unearth, you blast an enemy for 39 to 49 arcane damage, plus an additional 13 to 16 arcane damage to all enemies within 30 yards of them. All enemies damaged by the spell suffer 40% reduced movement speed for 10 seconds. We also start with the passive Artificer's Tools. Increases your wand attack speed by 20% and your critical strike rating with wands by 30% of your spirit. In addition, the spell power of your damaging spells is increased by 20% of your spirit. Your order abilities generate chaos stacks and your chaos abilities generate order stacks. Your order and chaos stacks will always add up to 100. Order stacks boost the effect of your chaos spells, and chaos stacks will boost the effect of your order spells. Reaching 100 stacks of either kind will provide a short lasting buff and reset you to 50-50 order and chaos stacks respectively. The order and chaos stacks work like this. It's a little, a little bugged right now, it's not showing both of them, but for order, the duration of order spells is increased by 20%, and cooldown of order spells reduced by 10%, effects of order spells increased by 20%. So for this, it's 10% duration, 10% effect, and 5% cooldown reduction per stack. It's the exact same thing for the chaos stacks. It's just the opposite, where it's instead of order spells, it's for your chaos spells. At level 4, we get decomposition. Accelerate the process of decomposition, causing 40 to 50 chaos damage to an enemy target over 23 seconds. This counts as a chaos ability and will therefore generate 5 stacks of order. At level 5, we get Reverse Wound. Heal an ally for 135 to 145. Applies Accelerated Recovery to the target, healing them over 1.20 minutes. If the target is already affected by the spell, reduce its duration by 12 seconds and add an additional stack to it. This counts as an Order ability and will therefore generate 5 stacks of Chaos. At level 8, we get Accelerated Recovery. Marks the target ally for Accelerated Recovery for 1.20 minutes. Healing them for 13 to 16 every 3 seconds, and increasing all magical healing they take by 6% for 14.40 seconds. Cannot target units already affected by accelerated recovery. This counts as an order ability and will therefore generate 5 stacks of chaos. At level 10 we get Chrono Beam. You rapidly age the target enemy over 0.79 seconds, dealing 12 to 14 chaos damage every 0.26 seconds for the duration. Each tick of this effect will consume an orb of fate to deal additional damage while channeling the target takes 10% increased periodic damage. The ticks of your periodic damage and healing effects have a chance to boost the quickness of your next Chrono Beam spell by 20%, stacking up to 4 times. This counts as a Chaos ability and will therefore generate 5 stacks of order. At level 12, we gain 2 abilities in the form of Rewind. You rewind back to your last infinite clone, setting your health, mana, and position to what it was when the clone was created. This spell is only usable after Chronomancer casts Infinite Clone on you. 
Infinite Clone creates an infinite clone of your target that records their current location, current health, and current mana. At any point, they may use the Rewind spell to transport back to the Infinite Clone, resetting their location, health, and mana back to the recorded state. Infinite Clones last 15 seconds. At level 14, we get Disintegrate. Fire a Disintegration Ray at an enemy target for 68 to 79 Chaos damage and applies Decomposition to all enemies near the target. This counts as a Chaos ability and will therefore generate 5 stacks of order. At level 15, we get Resynchronize. Switch to the timeline where your party didn't die, returning all party members to life with 2,640 health and 1,650 mana. Can be cast while dead, but cannot be used in combat. This counts as an order ability and will therefore generate 5 stacks of chaos. At level 18, we get Time Guard. Places a shield on an ally for up to 1 minute. Whenever the affected ally drops below 20% HP, this effect will be consumed and the target will regain 40% of their maximum health. Time Guard can only be placed on one target at a time. At level 19, we get Create Infinite Protector. Summons an infinite protector under the command of the Chronomancer. We also get Feast of Aeons. Destroys your active permanent pet to increase your spell haste by 15% and your spell damage by 40% of your intellect until cancelled. This effect is removed if you summon another pet. We also get Flow of Infinity. Causes 20% of all threat you generate to be redirected to your active infinite protector. At 22, we get Quick Spell. Quickens an ally target's spell casting, increasing their spell haste by 80%, last 3 seconds. For the duration of the effect, the target is immune to interrupt and silence effects. This spell consumes your orbs of fate to gain 100% increased duration for each orb. At level 24, we get Fortify Timeline. Instantly heals all allies within 40 yards for 43 to 52. Your periodic healing effects reduce the remaining cooldown of this ability by 1 second. This counts as an order ability and will therefore generate 5 stacks of chaos. At 26, we get Slow Time. Slows the enemy movement speed by 36% and their attack speed by 24% for 7.2 seconds. This counts as an order ability and will therefore generate 5 stacks of chaos. At level 28, we gain Distortion. Create a distortion around an ally, healing them for 74 to 86 and making them immune to damage for 3 seconds. And lastly, at level 30, we get Buy Time. It's a 10 minute cooldown. You stop time in a 40 yard radius for 10 seconds. All allies and enemies in the area, or those that enter the area within the duration, will become frozen in time, effectively stunning them for the duration. So, I know that that was a lot to take in. The Chronomancer is definitely a very, very complex class. Way more so than the Rune Master, in my opinion. So, this is going to be a very high skill cap class, and it's going to take a long time to master. But once you get it down, this can be an extremely effective class to play in the Conquest of Azeroth Alpha. You have... Pretty decent damage and really powerful healing, and then your utility is insane. Being able to just reset your cooldowns and all the slows and the immunities and all the buffs that you give to your party. So all that being said, I'm going to roll a little bit of PvP clips so you can kind of get an idea. Um, this PvP montage isn't going to be anything crazy because seeing as how the Chronomancer just launched... They are rolling out a massive amount of changes to it, so don't take what you see here to be an actual representation of what the Chronomancer is planning on being like later on.
Alright guys, hope you enjoyed that. As you can see, the Chronomancer has some really good utility, and they're really good at staying alive if played right. Their damage is a little bit on the lower side right now. When they first released, it was absolutely insanely overpowered. Like, you were just one-shotting it. And I mean one-shotting absolutely everybody. So they, they nerfed that really quick. But if y'all are interested in the Chronomancer, I know a lot of y'all have been asking about it. If you're looking for a really high skill cap, complex class that can be a, a ranged caster or a healer, then the Chronomancer is going to be the best bet for you to pick. Make sure you all like, subscribe, comment down below, ring the bell. That way you'll be notified of whenever I post my next videos. This is your host, Rabbit. Thanks for watching.